church pension fund, the church of pension fund, actually had a key shareholder in Wonga itself, which is very nice of him. It's a delicious irony that had he chosen a Sharia compliant asset manager to manage the Church of England pension fund, he wouldn't have had that problem because they wouldn't have invested in financial stocks in the first place. So there's a very valid argument to say that the demographic profile of the management of Islamic banks needs to stop being that certain sort of profile and needs to start being this, this much smaller minority within the banks who want to change Islamic finance for the better. Unfortunately, we're seen as a group of idealists, we're not seen as practical you know, pragmatists, people who... But that's changing now, and that's why you guys need to take that step and say, I want to work in the ethical finance industry, and I want to change it for the better. And I'd like you to hold on to that freedom, because what actually happens is you get jaded after 20 years and say, sorry, you know what, I should pay those kids school fees and have them say on the driveway, and that's why I continue to acquiesce to the products that I'm doing. So it would be nice if you guys can hold on to that. Thank you for both of your talks, excellent. Um, with regards to general knowledge base, for instance, as you were saying, what literature or books, articles would you recommend for the general leader, for anyone who's interested, to read on both finance in general and also Islamic finance specifically? Yeah.
Yeah, this is the same question that we've been debating, which is form of the substance. Um, I, I believe that there is a substance, the spirit of Sharia, which we are not addressing today. But we keep addressing the form, the, the contractual structure is becoming more important. What's important to me is the flow of money throughout the, the transaction. So, you know, we, we have a fatwa that says this company has issued a, a sukuk and it's compliant because it follows the following contractual structures. But actually, what is that company? What does it do? How does it treat its employees, its customers, its suppliers, its contractors, the environment, uh, its labor practices? You know, does it dump toxic waste? We don't look at that stuff. We don't look at it holistically. In the same way as Alam me, we talk about what, you know, what did we do in the last few seconds before the animal died? Was it slaughtered in this particular way? But we, talk, we don't talk about actually real Alam me is the way the animal was cared for during its life. It's just much more important in a way rather than the last two seconds of its existence. So, so there is an argument for the resources in that debate is still taking place in the next um, So I think we might be going over some of the uh, points that we've made previously, but um, in terms of like you said fiat currency that has no real value and you're saying money that had um, was backed by gold standards. So would you say that say the ten pound note that I'm you that I'm I'm really I'm, cringing now because you're gonna ask me a question I cannot answer. No 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 the, the ten pound note that I'm using is just part of this fiat currency system or the stock that I'm buying. Mm -hmm. Is that part of a haram system? So I'm dealing like the Shah Amara is from Haram money. Yeah. And the phone I have is from Haram money. Um, then you have an alternative which is you're going to live in a cave. Right? Of course, but I'm sure you're in animals and learn to hunt and shoot. Of course, I'm sure. But it's not very pragmatic, right? Mm. Yeah. So you have to live in the real world. Mm. So, would you, what would you, solution. so would you, is that what you're saying in terms of that there has to be a kind of top-down approach from leaders of nations? Is that what you were referring to? Sometimes that top-down approach occurs because guys like you start shifting all the money. And the thing that matters to them most above anything else is money. You know, Islamic finance is actually a So, um, what advice would you have to all of us here in terms of, you know, making this starting to make a change and set the wheel? What advice would you give to all of us here? Raise awareness. And I mean, I was looking the other day. The CEO of the bank in Canada that actually said, I have like X amount of Muhammad's not one has asked me to put something by the products. Um, That's very interesting. Um, and partly I think that happens because with all the Muhammads out there, they don't believe that Islamic finance is really Islamic. But until you... Or even exist. Yeah, or exists. Yeah. But until you take that first step and say, you know what, I need to do something about this, and maybe the first step is to actualize an Islamic finance institution. Well, I don't just believe that um, I think the movement will probably happen within what we have Because you know they have. 
they come with their preconceptions and they assume that you, that you believe in Sharia law. Um, I got caught, by the way, on the radio show by Richard Bacon. There's a Richard Bacon here. Um, it's Five Live. And I thought we were going to have a discussion about Islamic finance. And actually, we ended up having a discussion about the Sultan of Brunei and the chop people's hands off. <laughs> I don't shit, I've got an offside here. You know, I'm just going to read whatever happens. If I say I believe in Sharia law because I'm a Muslim, then I'm a barbarian and I should be living in the 12th century. And if I say, no, I don't believe in this, it's a lot of nonsense and we shouldn't do it this way, then I'm a hypocrite because I don't believe in the fundamentals of my, of my faith. So there's this kind of you know, assumption, I was talking about the development of Sharia law over 1,350 years, and then this kind of perception that we have 50, in the last 50 years of just sort of post-colonial identity searching, where religion is used as an instrument by rulers who are looking for this identity. And I think that's the real problem. And maybe we need to retake Sharia and, and you know, codify it according to the original principles, but give it a different flavor. Uh, one last question. Hi. Um, is the problem that we're having a conversation that's kind of ahistorical and removed from the historical realities of the Muslim world, where, say, a country like Malaysia had to fight for independence from the British, and now you have like neo-colonial banking interests that are going in there? The fact that you have something like Islamic finance now is a step in the right direction. It isn't going to be uh, a panacea. You're not going to have a country that is entirely autonomous from a global banking order. So the fact that we are in this position and there is a thing like Islamic finance, whereas 100 years ago it was nothing. You're colonized, you don't control your economy, you don't have anything. So the fact that we are here now, even though you're in a position of global fiat currency, the fact that there is Islamic finance, there are people trying to develop something, find some alternatives, that is a position of optimism and hope, rather than a position of pessimism and uh, kind of a defeatist, nihilistic existence. So... Thank you.